G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller, and I just jumped out of a plane for the first time in my life. We've got to uh, get in the, the bus here and go back to the thing. But, are you uh, going with her or are you going with us? I'll come with you guys. Uh, no, I've got to jump in the bus and go back to the thing, but I'll get back to you later about uh, how it was easy for me and how I made it easy for me, because it's a big lesson in horse training. So I'm back home and decompressed, but I just wanted to tell you about why the jumping out of a plane at 11,000 feet was was easy for me and it has to do with going outside your comfort zone but not going so far outside your comfort zone that it just completely freaks you out. So uh, at a clinic in Australia a few years ago a friend of mine that comes to my clinics there her name's Annika and she's from Sweden and she was on the Swedish skydiving team um, at the skydiving world championships and that's where she met this Australian skydiver and at the who was on the Australian skydiving team and they ended up getting married and she now lives in Australia but she's come to some of my clinics and uh, she was the one that kind of talked me into to skydiving so a couple of years ago my son and his girlfriend and I were there and we booked in to go skydiving this one day and we'd planned to do it for six months and every day for six months I had this knot in the pit of my stomach because I'm six months time I'm going to jump out of a plane and um, the day we actually went to do it there was some cloud cover and so we you know we're all nervous about going and we go to the to the office which is in town and um, they said, oh, we, might, we may or may not be able to jump. We have to wait an hour and see what happens. So they waited for an hour and they said, no, nah, there's too much cloud coming in. We, so you can't jump into clouds. You've got to have a hole in the clouds to jump through. And so they called it off. And so I had the hugest, like, dopamine release, like the hugest relief. And we walked out, we're walking down the street, and Annika said, well, we could probably go a couple of hours north of here. Um, there's probably a place up there we could do it. Do you want to, you want to do that? And I said, no, nah, I'm not ready. She said, but you were ready five minutes ago. I said, I've just spent six months getting ready to jump out of that plane. And now I don't have to jump out of the plane. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ready anymore. I, I, I can't do it that easily. And so then probably, I think it was probably a year later, maybe something like that. Maybe six months after that, I was in Las Vegas. I was uh, doing a thing there in Las Vegas. And uh, Robin and I were staying in a... In a casino hotel there called the stratosphere and they have this big tower and you can actually jump off the stratosphere it's 890 feet high or something rather it's a hundred and I don't know how many stories high it is but um so you get to jump off the top of the stratosphere I did it at night time so it's overlooking the Las Vegas strip and you get to jump off and that was really really hard to do but I did it and after I did that which is kind of halfway between not jumping at all and jumping out at 11,000 feet. After I did that, every day since then, I felt like, hey, I could go jump out of a plane right now. It wouldn't bother me. And so this morning, my son and I, we went and jumped out of a plane. And I didn't have to get ready for it. It wasn't a, it didn't bother me. I wasn't nervous at all. Um, you know, when, the, when they opened the door and the first person, I was the fourth one out, the first Oh, hey, Gwyn. Gwyn's going to join me. Hey, sweetheart. Uh, when the first person jumped out, um, it was surreal. Like, I'm sitting here in, a, in, a, in an aeroplane and two people just rolled out the door. Um, it, was it was so... Hey, so, you're okay, darling. It was surreal because it was just like the movies. Do you want to get down? There you go. It was just like the movies. But anyway... Um, I want to relate that to something that happened at a clinic in New Zealand a couple of years ago. And there was a girl that had been to several of my clinics and, uh, before, maybe two or three. And then she came to this clinic on a young horse that she started herself. So she, when I'd been around her before, she was kind of a nervous rider. And she's going to cut past that part with her older horse. And she started a young horse herself. She's walked the horse. She's trotted the horse. She hadn't canted the horse, but someone else had canted the horse. And a lot of times when you're... Uh, getting a young horse to canter for the first time, what you might do is you might go from a slower trot to a bigger trot, back to a slower trot, and then up to a bigger trot, and then back to a slower trot, and up to a bigger trot, and back to a slower trot, and then a bigger trot, and they just roll off into the canter, but you don't actually ask them to canter. You can just make that trot bigger, and they just roll off into it, and usually it's quite um, stress-free doing it that way, because, and the reason I like to do that is because you get that bigger trot and then relax and they don't come back down to the smaller trot, they, they get faster and faster and faster and faster. They kind of tell you if you went off into a canter, they probably get a fright and half run off. So that, tell, that gives you some 
you know, forewarning that that would happen. And the other thing is if you can't get a bigger truck quite easy, they get tight and get mad about your leg or whatever, then you know that if you ask for a can, you'll probably get a bit of a kick out or, or whatever. So it's really good practice to get up into that bigger truck, you know, to get to the canter. So I said to this girl, I said, so you haven't cantered yet? She goes, no. Uh, but a lady who's been helping me, she has cantered her. I said, okay, so you know the horse canters quite well. So <clears throat> what has her suggestion to you been? She goes, well, she wants me to do a bigger trot. And when she said bigger trot, her face went white. Like the thought of doing a bigger trot. Because you know what the bigger trot means, don't it? It turns into the canter. Um, her face went white. And I said, okay, so how fast do you think, in kilometers an hour, how fast do you think your horse normally trots? And she said, oh, I don't know, five kilometers an hour? And I said, okay, and how fast do you think your coach here wants you to trot? She goes, 10, and her face went white again. And I said, okay, how about during the clinic, would you trot six kilometers an hour? And she thought about it, and I said, for one stride. She goes, oh yeah, I'd do that. I said, okay, that's what we're gonna do. So it was a three-day clinic, and the first day I had to trot around at her comfortable pace, five kilometers an hour. I had to go up to six, back to five and trot around until she felt completely relaxed again before she did it again. Five to six to five. That's all she did the first day. Come back the, the second day, and I said, okay, so how do you feel about the six now? She said, yeah, good. I said, okay, what I want you to do is five, six, and if you get the six and it feels good, go to seven, then come back to five. And so she did that all the second day. That's all I had to do. And then the third day at the clinic, I said, okay, so what we're gonna to do today is you're gonna do five to six and back again. When that feels good, you're gonna go five, six, seven, back again. And then I want you to go five, six, seven, eight kilometers an hour and then back to five. And so we started out, I, I kind of observed her doing that the first couple of times. I said, okay, good, just continue doing that. I'll help somebody else, just keep doing that. And about five minutes later, every I wasn't paying attention to her. There was like a collective gasp from the whole clinic and we look over and she's cantering. And she's cantering and cantering and cantering and cantering and cantering. Like the canter is not a bother to the rider. And so when she finally came to a stop, I said, so how'd that feel? She said, yeah, it was easy. And I said, why was it easy? She goes, well, once I got to eight, it was easy. It wasn't hard to do. And it's kind of like taking that first step and not having, I think that the key for me personally to all this stuff is having that first step outside your comfort zone, not be too big a step to where you just dread doing it. And that was me with the plane. Okay, me going from not jumping out of anything to jumping out of a plane scared the hell out of me. But then after I jumped off the stratosphere, that was a year and a half ago, after I jumped off the stratosphere in Las Vegas, jumping out of a plane was, was not the slightest bit of a problem. It's the same thing for this girl. Once she could get to where she could trot to eight kilometers an hour easy, she went, oh, I'll just ask her to canter and, and off she went. But the day be, or two days before, when I mentioned the word fast trot, she went white. She, she got all worried about it because it was gonna to be too big a stretch. So this is the same thing training your horse. You wanna take your horse, you've gotta, you know, to, for you to get better at something, for your horse to get better at something, they've gotta go outside their comfort zone. But what you wanna do is get them just outside their comfort zone and back in their comfort zone. And when that becomes really easy and that, that next step is almost part of their comfort zone, their homeostasis, they like to call it, then you can take and go a little bit further out. And what you find is the further out you get, the easier it gets to make bigger steps. It's the same as anything. You take little steps in the beginning and as you get further in it, you take bigger steps. I think if you try to take a too big a step at the beginning, um, it just doesn't work at all. You know, think about a lot of people have trouble taking their horse to a horse show for the first time. So they, they've never taken the horse away from home. They take their horse to a horse show where there's lots of other horses, there's lots of atmosphere, there's lots of commotion, and they expect to try to compete them. So the rider's a lot more nervous than they normally are, all at the same time. And, and a lot of times it turns into a wreck. And I always suggest to people, first time away from home, take your horse to a friend's house, take him to somewhere where there's nothing going on. It's kind of what I call the change one thing at a time principle. Take him away from home. So the only thing's changed is we're not at home, we're in a different location. But there is no more distraction, there's no more atmosphere, there's no more, the rider's no more worried uh, than there is at home. And then you just slowly add things. And then you end up, you can, in the end, you can kind of take them anyway. But anyway, so that's my uh, why uh, jumping out of a plane is very similar to horse, training horses and training people too. So I hope that gives you something to think about. I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna go throw up now. <laughs> okay, hope that helps. See you guys next time.